solutions to the NYSERDA Tenant Energy Data Challenge. And this article and the figures in the code are all publicly available online, and you'll find the links in my submission and below this video. So we'll go through each of the problems, the answers, and some figures that help back up the answers. So the first problem is to forecast consumption for all the tenant meters for a test date for which we don't have the actual consumption. So for this problem, we're going to train a machine learning model on the tenant meter data before this test date and then use that train model to predict consumption on the test date. And while the forecast consumption CSV isn't that interesting, to try and get a sense of our predictions, we can look at the forecast in blue here versus the average Monday during COVID consumption for each meter. And we're using Monday because the test date is a Monday and the day of the week has a big effect on, on the consumption. So what we see here is that our forecasts match relatively closely to the average Monday consumption um, during COVID. And some of the meters, it doesn't match up quite as well. Uh, those meters tend to have a little bit more noise and don't exhibit the same regular patterns. Um, but we can't measure the actual accuracy of our predictions because we don't have the answers for that test date. But we can use this method and also some validation later on to try and get a sense for how accurate our model will be. And we can see here for the overall building, our forecast is pretty well in agreement with the average Monday during COVID. So the second problem is to find the correlation between the, the occupancy and the consumption. And the most concise way to put this is that for every 10% decrease in occupancy, the consumption is expected to decrease by about 3%. So for a 90% reduction in occupancy, as we saw during COVID, we'd expect the consumption to decrease by about 27%. And we can look at these relationships for each meter. So what we're showing here is the tenant meter and then the percentage consumption decrease for a 10% decrease in occupancy. And so for most meters, they cluster around that 3% average value, but there are some meters for which the consumption actually increases as the occupancy decreases, which might indicate some anomalous values at that meter. And to get a visual sense of this relationship, we can plot the reduction in consumption versus the reduction in occupancy. And we see a positive linear relationship, meaning that as we further reduce occupancy, we further reduce consumption. And again, every 10% reduction in occupancy, which is about uh, 200 people is going to result in a 3% reduction in the consumption. And the third question is to try and get a sense of the accuracy of our model using the mean absolute error. And we calculate our mean absolute error about as about 0 0.095 kilowatt hours averaged over the tenant meters. And how, how we assess this is using a technique called one day ahead rolling validation where for each tenant meter, we select a set of target dates. We train a machine learning model on all the data before each target date, predict the consumption for that date, and then compare the forecast consumption to the actual consumption. And what that's doing is it's mimicking what happens on our test date, where we train on all the data prior to that date and then predict for the test date. But in this case, we have the actual consumption for each target date, so we can calculate that mean absolute error and when we average that over all um, the tenant meters, we see that we get a very low mean absolute error. And to try and put that in perspective, we can also calculate the mean absolute error for the entire building. Um, that value is 23.5 kilowatt hours, which represents about a 4% error on a set of 20 validation dates. So we can predict the building's consumption for the next day with 96% accuracy at each 15 minute interval. So that gives us a sense of how accurate our model is going to be. The next question is figuring out the features that are the most important in determining the energy efficiency. So trying to dig into to the model a little bit more. Um, and when we do that, we find that the most important features determining the efficiency are the time of day. Buildings are more efficient in the late afternoon and evening during COVID. Uh, we'll take a look at a plot in just a second, 
the time since the start of COVID, we saw that buildings got more efficient and then decreased in efficiency um, as they slowly started reoccupying. Uh, occupancy as a percentage of the baseline, uh, where the most efficient occupancy was about 5%, and also day of the week. Weekdays were actually more efficient um, than weekends. And so to get a sense for, for what all that text means, um, we can look at the before COVID consumption versus the during COVID consumption. And the before is in blue and with COVID is in orange. We're looking at a meter by meter um, look. And so we, we can try and see some of those trends that we just described. So for example, on the weekends, we see that the base load is about the same from before COVID to during COVID, at least for, for this meter, and it, it does vary by meter. Um, and then we can also see another trend is that uh, the late afternoon appears to be a greater reduction in consumption, um, as it looks like the building actually starts to shut down a little bit earlier during COVID. And here's a clearer example of that. Uh, we see that prior to COVID, maybe the building starts shutting down at you know 10 p.m., 9 p.m., um, but then during COVID, the building starts shutting down at like 7 p.m., um, so that's much earlier. And some of these plots have a little bit more noise with the meters, uh, but most of the plots exhibit about the same uh, tendencies. And uh, finally, we can look at the building as a whole, where we see that the base load actually decreases quite a bit on, on the weekends and, and overnight, um, but actually during the day, it decreases even more. And again, the building as a whole seems to shut down about an hour earlier uh, during COVID than prior to COVID. Um, so that indicates that there's, there's some opportunity to shut down earlier and save a little bit of energy. The, the next question is to find the most efficient occupancy level as a percentage of the max occupancy. And when we run the numbers, we find that a 5% occupancy level, about 100 people, um, is the most efficient. And so to measure this efficiency while controlling for factors such as the time of the year and the weather, uh, we use another machine learning model that we train on all the data prior to COVID. Then we make predictions during COVID without using the occupancy data so that the model predictions represent the consumption of each meter as if the building were operating at the baseline occupancy. And then we compare the forecasted consumption at full occupancy to the actual consumption and from that, we can derive an efficiency value um, that is controlled for external factors. And so uh, one way to look at this is to plot the efficiency over time and color the plot by the reduction in occupancy. So what we find is that the most efficient operation occurs in June with a reduction in occupancy of 95%, which corresponds to a 5% occupancy. And an interesting point to note here is that um, even a small increase in occupancy drastically decreases the efficiency. Um, so here you see a reduction of 86% uh, or representing 14% occupancy, and the efficiency is about half of what that is at um, an occupancy reduction of 95%. And again, uh, we think that the building starts occupying a little bit more into July and August and September, and the energy efficiency drops there um, as tenants come in. So what can we conclude from this model? Um, so even a few tenants in the building drastically increases consumption. And so this suggests that there's a need for communication between the building engineers who are controlling the building equipment and the tenants. So if the building engineers were able to know the occupied floors and when the tenants are on those floors, they could probably increase efficiency by selectively shutting off equipment. Um, and we actually might see, be seeing some of that during the afternoon when the building starts shutting down a little bit earlier, but also there could be an opportunity to start up a little bit later in the morning if tenants aren't coming in as early. But it's, it's hard to tell that um, without that communication between the tenants and um, the building engineers. Uh, and we also see that the energy reduction is greatest during the day um, and not so great overnight on, on the weekends. So there might be an opportunity to decrease the base load even further. Although if you decrease the base load um, further, then you might have to spend more energy and time uh, heating up the building in the morning. So there might be a trade-off there. Um, so the final question is what other information, if any, would we want to include in our model? 
And as a data scientist, we always want more data. And so a few ideas would be to start with the occupancy per floor by each hour of the day. So just getting some more granular occupancy data. And I know that may be difficult due to some privacy concerns, but um, it would help us by both predicting the tenant consumption and if we could figure out the tenant patterns. Um, so when they're in the building, um, then we'd be able to tell the building engineers to operate the equipment more efficiently um, by selectively shutting off equipment uh, for floors where there, there are no tenants. Um, another piece of information we could use would be lease obligations. So when, when the building is required to be within a comfortable temperature range, so we could try to optimally schedule both the startup and the turn off. Um, and really any internal time series data from the, the BMS would help improve our model uh, or let us identify more efficient operation. Um, and finally, this is, this is a, a new point, is that uh, we're starting to see more interest in involving in trying to quantify the building's indoor air quality. So that would be measuring things like the fresh air percentage, the air changes per hour, carbon dioxide and particulate matter inside the building. And that sort of measures the building's health of um, in the indoor atmospheric health. And if we're able to optimize those numbers um, and show to tenants that our buildings are very healthy indoors, that hopefully would encourage um, tenants to, to reoccupy offices. And so now we see um, as buildings start to reoccupy, we face this dual challenge of creating both a healthy indoor environment and also reducing carbon footprints. Um, but if we do have the right data and we have a way to apply that data, then hopefully we can meet these two objectives at the same time. And so thank you for watching this video. Again, this post is publicly available along with all the code so you can check it out for yourself.